So people ask me, so where are you from? Are you from Pakistan? Then I say, no, I'm an Indian. So they go, okay, so are you from India? And I'm like, no, I'm from Fiji. So do they have Indians in Fiji here? And I'm like, yeah, but they, even, there's a huge colony of Indians in Fiji. Half the population is Indian. So they're like, but you're a Muslim, right? And I'm like, okay, yes. So it's really hard to define where we come from. I view myself as a Pacific Islander. I define myself as an Indian Fijian. Why? Because uh, there is a male that suits me most. I don't like to be called Indo-Fijian. I like to be called an Indian because I'm a pure Indian. I also don't like to be called Fijian because well, a lot of people have different issues about the word Fijian. They say, okay, if you're an indigenous Fijian, then you should be called a Fijian. I believe that too. I think I'm a Pacific Islander because I live in the Pacific, but I'm an Indian by race. We have a connection from India. That's why we are feeling something. Because I'm not a Fiji, and I'm an Indian living in Fiji. I, I have never been to India. Even though I have grown up all my life here in Fiji, a part of me also considers myself a Pacific Islander because I think I relate more to a Pacific Islander than so much to an Indian. It was an international soccer match between India and Ba. It was in Ba. I went there, and before the game, uh, we had to stand for the national anthem of both countries. And first was India, and they had the India's flag, you know, and then the players in the line, and we stood up. I thought it would be just an ordinary, like other, you know, countries anthem. And then it started, and then I heard it. And I was feeling something going inside me, you know, it, my heart beating faster than normal. But when I do hear the Fiji anthem, like, it's like not giving me any kind of difference or like, though I class myself as a Fiji islander. I, all, I have always wanted to visit India. India, you feel really proud of it. In regards to access to media in Lambasa, it's uh, much less than Suva because um, there is uh, like lack of technology over there. So, like speaking from for myself, uh, I come from a village actually, and uh, from in my village there are like not many people who have television sets at home, and uh, so they don't have access to news and stuff, and um, likewise newspaper and magazines. So, like in Suva, um, there is much more access to news and um, the other kinds of media. The Bollywood movies are relevant to my life. It's like the things, that way of dressing, their, their beliefs, the way they talk, the fashions, the way, they, the, the, way the movies, the stories are. At times, it, it shows that what my life is totally. The source of entertainment, you can say it reflects India. Uh, Bollywood movies, they have uh, some universal values um, that are brought in all religions. So I believe that I can really relate to them. Like from my mom, my grandma's side, when we see them and we compare them with this generation, the dressing is so different. Before it was, if you're in India, you would probably be more covered up. You wear the kameez, you even wear saris and things like that. But now, it's somebody is wearing a kameez, it's like, oh, are you going to the temple? No, I wear a kameez all the time. It's me, I'm an Indian. And now you can see the way they are dancing, the, the song, the, 
thing, the way they dress, it's like everything is totally changing. Everything is basically changing now. Nowadays, Bollywood movies are becoming more Hollywood kind. Some of the movies, they want to act like an American, taking an American style. What I feel about Hollywood movies is that they show a lot of skin and you don't get much values out of them. Whereas Hindi movies, yes, they do show skin nowadays a lot, but that doesn't mean that you don't learn anything from it. A lot of people... But it's like people look down on you if you're wearing a kameez. You have to be more Western to survive. And even when you go to weddings, you see the whole Western concept to their dressing. Like, for example, a good example probably would be when the girls wear sari. Their blouses are like a bikini top. <laughs> because it's just like a hot neck top or just thin straps or something, and they're really becoming more Westernized. And that's all influences from watching Bollywood movies. Um, I can't say I like Bollywood movies that much. I do like some. I like the documentary styles that they do, but oh, it was nice to watch them. <laughs> so choose between Hollywood and Bollywood. I guess Bollywood uh, for the life in India and yeah, and how the people over there are. Like. And Hollywood, I would go for the actual movies. But we know that it is it's sometimes a very different story. So I believe that these Bollywood movies are um, they are painting a picture that sometimes isn't true. The Bollywood movies give me a picture of uh, my identity as. Uh, as an Indo-Fijian, I would say as an Indian, uh, because uh, uh, there is not much influence on me, I, I believe, as a, the other cultures have on me. So uh, the Bollywood movies show me um, the picture that uh, what my ancestors, um, ancestors, where my ancestors came from, and how they lived and how they behaved. Well, it's not a total uh, picture of what they did in uh, in Bollywood movies, but it's give me gives me a slight uh, idea of how they lived, especially the, um, the tradition, the culture, the uh, different celebrations of uh, different uh, rituals and um, festivals, and uh, also s to some extent the land issue in India, poverty in India. So it's a bit of a uh, depiction of what happened, what my ancestors did, and uh, the also uh, some of the things that um, we are doing now uh, some of the parts of the, uh, the culture from India that we are following and uh, some of the things that we are not doing. So it shows what we are doing and what we are not doing from those past uh, days. It's, it's, it's sort of very upsetting when you, know, you, watch, you watch all these shows about the Pacific and stuff like that. And you know, people conveniently forget Indians. It's like, okay, you have this huge um, media campaign going on. Okay, we're going regional, we're, we're talking about the Pacific. And you have a, you have a Fijian, you have a Tongan, you have a PNG person, and you have someone from the Solomon Islands. And hello, no Indians. We have half the population, like 400,000 people living here, but you know, you forget us. Seeing the situation in India at the moment, I would have thought, yeah, I migrated to America or other and you know, compromise, things can be solved. So I'm looking for a pretty good future for me here in Fiji. I think it's okay if you acknowledge uh, our differences because people are different. Uh, I wouldn't consider migrating to anywhere else because I think that Fiji is a beautiful place. Those people have been living here for so long. You just, you're, you're one, you're one country. You're, you're the people of Fiji. You're not either Fijians or Fijians. And all these racial things and this segregation and casting and putting people into a box is just not right. I mean, I can't imagine living anywhere else except in Fiji. Fiji is me, I am Fiji, you know.